I would like to call this meeting to order for the City of San Juan Commission today, April 11th, 2017. If we can rise for an invocation, and Mr. Arjona, can you lead us in the invocation? Dear Lord, thank you for your blessing. We pray this meeting is successful, productive, and blessed. Guide us during our discussion. Amen. Let us face the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. May be seated. <clears throat> under presentations, I'd like to call of order, and that would be for... Um, C, presentation on the first annual Royal Egg Hunt by Mr. Adrian Carr, President, and the San Juan Community Lions Club. And we have a lot of special guests here with us. If you can all come forward, a couple of young ladies at different titles representing the city of San Juan. And welcome, you're always welcome to be here. Come forward, ladies, young ladies, come forward. How are y'all doing? Doing good? Good. A good evening, Mayor. Good evening, Mr. Uh, good Carr. evening, uh, members of the commission. My name is Adrian Carr, and I'm the um, president of the Lions Club. And we're here uh, with our girls because they will be hosting our first annual Easter egg hunt on Thursday, um, April 13th, from 6 to 8 at Carmen Elementary. And um, they're here because they, this is their project. This is their, one of their service projects, and uh, we're hope this is our first one. So right now, with you know, we're trying to get uh, some donations and, and uh, get the community involved. But uh, this is the project that they that they came up came up with, and uh, I'll go ahead and let them talk a little bit more about that. If you can come to the uh, state your name and come to the uh, microphone. Okay. Well, my name is Gwyneth Rosso. I'm the Miss San Juan 2017. So um, we all kind of got together and we were thinking, okay, what could our next event be, right? So uh, something that we wanted to do to just give back to the community, um, to the kids and everything, we wanted to host an Easter egg hunt because there, there isn't one here in our city. So like Mr. Carr said, this is still um, up in the but it's already on Thursday, you know? So um, we're just looking for donations um, in any way, whether it be like with eggs and stuff, but what we want to do is we just want to have all the kids come together, bring their own baskets. Uh, we've already had uh, several raffle baskets to, to give to the kids, um, Easter egg baskets for boys and for girls, and we just kind of want to have them um, have a good time before they go into their Easter break. Um, we want to have moon jumps where I think we're, we are going to have a moon jump, I believe. We're going to have moon jumps. Uh, we're going to have a magic show. So we're just going to have a little bit of different things uh, for people to just come together and the kids with their families before they go to the, the Easter break for them. And I'll go ahead and let Melissa give you the extra details on that. Okay. So good afternoon, my name is Melissa Lugo and I'm your Miss San Juan 2017. And first of all, I wanna say it is a great honor and privilege to be your Miss San Juan 2017 and to be a part of this royal court of this magnificent city, San Juan. And as my royal sister said, we're gonna have this royal egg hunt. And we're making history tonight by officially announcing our first annual Miss San Juan royal egg hunt that will be taking place like Mr. Carr said, this Thursday, April 13th, from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. at Carmen Elementary High School. Um, high school. Elementary school. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and what are the age groups? Do you have an age group or just? It's, yeah, especially elementary kids so they can go and have fun. But, like, it's open to all ages. To all the kids in San Juan. Is that yeah. right? Well, very good. Um, and you're looking for donations. And what kind of donations are you looking for? Is it monetary? Is it baskets? Or what do we want to let the community know? Yes. Uh-huh. So um, donations, if possible, we're looking for monetary because we are the ones that are stuffing the eggs that we have bought. Um, we have several sponsors already. I know that um, McDonald's was one of them. They were giving us coupons, so we have to put those coupons inside of the eggs. Texas Roadhouse donated 100 eggs already um, that have a free kids meal inside, so they're sponsoring in the way that they can, but we are seeking to get monetary sponsorship, if possible. So I've been, but any, anything helps, you know, if somebody knows... Uh, that they can like uh, give us the moon jump, you know, just have it there for the kids. Anything that it is that they can think would fit in with this um, 
with this event, we're more than open to it. Okay, very good. Um, you just have a, a sponsorship already from Mr. Villalobos and his law firm for $200. Ooh. Thank you so much. Thank you. I'll go and- Who's and, the uh, contact person, you know? The contact person would be Christine Bermea. Okay, yes. all right. You, you can get with her and um, she can give you the more details on that. Okay. I have $60 with me and I'm going to give you that right now too. <laughs> Thank you so, so much. I challenge the rest of the commission, whatever you can have. To, it's a real short turnover between here and Thursday. Um, and so anybody else, uh, whatever you may be carrying, if you feel that you're able to, because I know that this is a great project. It's our first. We want to make sure it's successful. And I'm really proud of the fact that you all are very, your leaders. I see it, and you had a lot of initiative, and I've seen it, and you've participated and try to make, make it a point to be out there, and I, we definitely want to be supportive of that. Of course, uh, and you all present extremely well, so that's wonderful. Mayor, um, I'm gonna go ahead and contribute $100. Very good. Perfect. Perfect. So anybody much. else from the commission? <laughs> <laughs> try, try, try to beat that. Okay, 100. <laughs> uh, does Chrissy Bermet have a phone number? <laughs> <laughs> yes, let me go ahead and get that for you. And also, we um, not only are asking for, for donations, but if you all can be there with us, we'd greatly appreciate it. It's our first annual one. We want to keep this going for the next uh, royal court to come and um, for them to just continue with this every year. And we just want to make it bigger and bigger. So we're starting off at Carmen Elementary, and who knows where we can go from there. Um, go. The phone number for Christine Bermea, it's 956-460-1068. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay, well, my four-year-old will be there. Okay, okay, awesome. Thank you. <laughs> I owe you. I'll go ahead and leave the money with Mr. Arjona. Sometime I'll drop it off early in the morning, and one of y'all can just go by and, and pick it up. Okay? Thank you so much. Thanks for all the work that y'all are doing. Have a lot of fun. I want to thank Ms. Bermea, Mr. Carr, and, and of course the parents uh, for the work that y'all are doing with these young ladies. Appreciate it. Thank you. Um, going back to our agenda, under presentations, we have the Planning and Zoning Department uh, monthly report. We have the Parks and Recreation monthly report. We have the San Juan Library monthly report and the Sanitation Department reports. Are there any questions on any of these for any of the department heads? I want to ask on the, um, the sanitation. I know we're going to have a little discussion a little bit later on uh, vehicles and usage and all of that, but um, I wanted to ask you as far as uh, upon ordering and getting that new equipment, if it gets to be approved, are we able to uh, maintain our services and we're on, on schedule with what we do have? Ms. We are on schedule, Mayor. I just want to uh, let you know that we had a problem with one of the vehicles tomorrow. It's our heaviest day. Um, we're, I had the mechanics fixing it. It's like a temporary fix. Uh, it was a radiator, it cracked. So they welded whatever they could. So we could use it tomorrow, pick up all, because tomorrow is the heavy day, and then I'll repair it on Thursday. We still have the... Um, a rental, I saw that, that yes, we're using. Mayor, I, without that rental, we only really have uh, three good trucks right now. Okay, but we're on schedule? We're on, on schedule. Gonzalez. Yeah. And, and, and for the brush as well? The brush is at the south, no, northeast quadrant right now. And we're on schedule on that. Very good. Yes. And I wanted to ask you the, um, gosh, I don't know, um, there was something else. You talked about the sweeper. We've got the sweeper moving. Sweeper has it's been great. out all week. The, we, uh, what I have is uh, I have a gentleman that's going out there and he's spraying uh, weed killer Good. on the grass that's on the street in that because we can't just go and, and use the, the sweeper. It just doesn't pick it up because it's mm -hmm. so bad. So he's out there putting the kill, uh, weed killer and then the sweeper the following day is going b behind uh, whatever he kill, uh, weeds that are already ready to pick up. What we're doing is we're going around twice and three times, and I can see it. Do we need to scrape that? Are we scraping, or is that only no, in well, more heavy? Well, some of the streets you can uh, scrape, Mayor. Some of the streets you can't because I mean some of them are pretty bad. So that's why we're first putting the roundup, and then we're going from behind and, and uh, picking up the weeds with the sweeper. 
Yeah, I've been seeing that a lot in the streets and it's looking yeah. really good, uh, Ms. Yeah. Gonzalez. Well, uh, I, I really believe that like Main Street, if you go down Main Street, uh, Nebraska, you could tell the difference now. Sure. Yeah, and they did the sidewalks also. They put the weed killer on the sidewalk because uh, they were pretty bad on Nebraska. Yeah. And we're also doing it on the other streets. Anything that's the main street. And not, we're not forgetting the neighborhoods. Of course. Uh, we went into 14th in Kansas and cleaned that out and put the round up and now they're gonna go in there hopefully tomorrow and Thursday to start sweeping that area off also. Thank you. You're welcome. Mr. Arjona, you don't, I know you don't have a um, report, but is there anything in particular that you needed to um, not necessarily inform us and any of these others that stand out? <clears throat> One of the only things is that the, but we're gonna be talking about the uh, police department, the, the building. Uh, it's, it's going up pretty, pretty fast, I think. And the uh, gentleman is here, but we'll have a presentation in a, in a couple of more minutes on that. Very good. And I know, um, Ms. Sesson, I'm looking at, at the, the report, um, you know, with the unfortunate uh, passing of one of our members of the library. How are our folks doing as far as uh, services and, um, and shifts? Struggling. Um, but, uh, I was allowed by Mr. Arjona to give the uh, two of the employees overtime. So they're covering some of the hours that uh, needed to be. Very good. And we having, uh, we will be advertising for a position. I would think that that's one that definitely. That, yes, because it, we really need that, that person. I mean, it's not that she left for another job, so. We need to replace her. All right, then. And are folks doing well? Our patrons are. Yeah. Can't get in there. I know. Can't get in there. I can imagine. Thank you, Ms. Hess. No, Mr. Wingham, I, um, I called you last week on a call. I got a call from one of the baseball teams. Again, yes. lost uh, a player, didn't want to play with the coach, whatnot. Dad took him out, put him on another team. What was the whole deal with that yes uh we straightened it out we talked to the coach and i explained to mr horner the process we didn't move him to another team he went back into the draft and got drafted got drafted so again if, if somebody doesn't want to play with that team they can just go back into the draft um it's a case by case you know um uh, parent had brought up some issues and knowing the issues ahead of time i didn't want something to happen and then get point back well you were made aware of these issues and did nothing about it. So um, we took everything into, consider into consideration, uh, discussed it as a staff, and uh, put the child back in the draft. And then he got picked up? And then now, he got drafted by yep, um, by another team. Now, it was open, as in the draft. Everybody had a, a chance at him? Yes, and, it, and after, after looking at it, um, there were several picked before him. So, I mean, he didn't go number one to anybody. Or What happens to the team that lost a player? Well, all the teams had equal amount of players. Nobody was so even left though they without lost a this, team. Even though they lost this one, they still had right. the same amount. All, all, all the teams had the equal amount of players. Which is how many? They ended up with 10 each. 10 each. The, the team in question apparently had to forfeit yesterday, Mr. Willingham. Were you aware of that? Uh, yes, because of uh, school function. Function. So um, we did let them know that because it's a school function, where we look at, we will look at rescheduling the game. According to this coach, this is the second game he has to forfeit. Mm, I wasn't aware of the other one just last night's. Okay. And you did make contact with that coach personally. We, I have not spoken to him. Okay. Uh, but my staff has. All right. Can you make contact with him? I will. Thank you, sir. All righty. Um, we have the presentation of the audit report um, from the city of San Juan, Texas for fiscal year ending September 30th, 2016. Mr. Arjona. Yes, Mayor, commissioners, good evening. Uh, I've got, uh, we have Mr. Garcia and Peña's firm here with us to give us a presentation on the audit report ending 2016. Okay. Can you come forward, sir?
Good evening, Mayor, Commissioners. I'm Manuel Garcia with Garcia and Peña CPAs from Westlake. And we're here to go over your, your audit for the year in September 30, 2016. And first, I want to thank you all for giving us the opportunity to be your certified public accountants. And of course, I thank Mr. Arjona and his staff for the courtesies provided to us for doing our work, and Mr. Pablo Garza and his staff. I would like to just kind of spend a little time going over the the audit report itself, since it consists of several parts. We got, uh, well, we got two parts, but one of them is just the, just the introduction. And then we have, uh, which is on the table of contents, we have the introduction at the very beginning, which is the city officials. And then we have part two. And this is the one that's quite lengthy. We need because it, re it has the basic financial statements, and it also has a management discussion and analysis. And then we have individual governmental funds, <coughs> and then we have the proprietary funds, which are basically your utility fund and your sanitation. And then we have, well, we have a fiduciary fund also. On the second page of the table of contents, uh, we follow up with the notes to the financial statements and then we have required supplementary information. And then in this area, we have the non, a grouping of your non-major governmental funds. And we have quite a few of those. You have a lot of small funds that are grouped together. Some are capital projects funds and some are special revenue funds. We've divided them into half of each in each section. So when you look at them, you will be looking at one group that is all capital projects and one group that is just <coughs> special revenue funds. Then on the supplemental information, we have individual schedules for your general fund. And basically here all we have is your, your just your revenues and expenditure section. And then we have a section that is more detailed in your and your expenditures and revenues in the general fund. And uh, then we have uh, the same thing with the, uh, we have a comparison budget and actual. Then we have the compliance section, uh, scheduled in expenditures of federal awards. And of course we have an independent auditor's report again on internal control. And then we have the schedule of findings and question cost in the, rear, in the back of the report. I'd like to start on page, should be page A, and this is the independent auditor's report. And our report is basically includes several little sections. It's on the first page, we have the report on the financial statements, which is, covers the scope of the report, mainly your your, we have a, the financial segments on the, on all of your funds, basically, where there's no restrictions on to, to the funds that were presented. You want to have a little paragraph on management's responsibility for these financial statements. Then we have the auditor's responsibility. And on the following page, we have the opinion on the report. And basically, this is what we're here for to present our opinion on these financial statements. And in our opinion, uh, they're fairly presented. We don't have any restrictions on these financial statements or, or exceptions to it. Then we have a section on other matters which requires the, explains what the required supplementary information is. And then of course we have other information which is some of the information that we've added to this report just to make it a little more comprehensive and provide you with a little more detailed information should you want to read it. On the 
management discussion and analysis. This is the new section that came back in a few years back. We have a summary of your operations, but unless you really look at the whole report, or at least a portion of it, it won't make too much sense just reading the numbers. Work. The only one that makes sense to me on page D is the very top highlight. This one says city government-wide net position increased to 61,501,000 for the year as a result of this year's operations and gross governmental activities is 21,926,000 because <coughs> the water and sewer fund or utility funds are 39 million. See, but the important thing is, is that it doesn't tell you how we got there. And there are some major changes to both the governmental uh, position of the governmental funds and the utility funds. <coughs> on page <coughs> I, really page I on, the, on this section, uh, there's a very uh, short summary of, oper of the of city's operations for the general fund and the business type activities. And probably it's a lot easier to read than, than pages one and two, which is the government-wide financial statements, you know. But we'll go to page one and two, which is the uh, statement of net position or balance sheet. In the, in the <coughs> statement of financial position, we have your assets on the first page, on page one. On page two, we have the liabilities. And the biggest change, if you were to compare it to last year, on page one is your cash balances. <coughs> At the very top, on the governmental funds, we have uh, we have six million dollars in cash and cash equivalents, and we have investments of one million seven, total totaling eight million five. In the business time activities, we have six million in cash and four million in investment, totaling eleven million dollars. Then halfway down the page. We have temporarily restricted, and you have another $4 million on temporarily restricted funds. Because this is a lot of money to have. The bond issuance? Part of it, yes. And part of it is grant monies. On page two, this is the liability section. We, we have the, your notes, your bonds. At the bottom is the net position. And the first line item over there is, is, is invested in capital assets, net of related debt. You got 14 million and 23 million in the business type activities. Then we begin with the restrictions, which are the ones that eat up the money that you have at the top. You know, we have debt service. You have to have 539,000 in debt service to support the debt that's required. And of course, we have 3 million in the utilities fund, on the business accounts. And on the capital projects, you have three million seven in the business, uh, governmental activities and four million in the business activities, so utility funds. And that's all pretty much cash at this point, which is your bond issues. And then you have the economic development, that's normally all restricted at 305,000 in municipal court monies, uh, federal state awards, one million two, and of course you have other purposes that you designate at seven five hundred and twenty-seven thousand, and the only thing that's unrestricted is six hundred and sixty-two thousand, which is what you have available to work with in your governmental activities. Of course, you have ample cash to cover that. Well, the same thing in the business type activities. You have seven million dollars that are unrestricted. So this is the, this is the one that's crucial. It's good enough to have at the top, but you need to see what, what is it that you can work with. On pages three and four, uh, we have the statement of activities, which is like a profit and loss statement. We have, of course, in the governmental funds, just like in the utility funds, we now include depreciation in your expenditures. So it differs a little bit from what you're normally used to looking at in your budget reports. On the general government, we have three million spent there. This year, your total 
Governmental activities and expenses were 13 million, 606,000. Then you have some other income offsetting that expense of 735,000, and, and you have some grants and some capital grants also. Down below, you have the business type activities. You have your water services, and you have the expenditures for the water service, expenditures for the sewer services, and of course, then the garbage and brush. Then on the next column, you have the revenues that are, that are attached to those expenditures. So overall, you have six million in expenditures, and you have eight million in revenues for, this, for the water and sewer and the garbage department. And they're both up from last year. I think they are on the uh, on the expenditures we're up 109,000 from last year, and we're 766. I'm sorry, no, we're 473,000 up on the revenues. Now on the following page, the governmental activities indicate uh, how much the expenditures exceed the grant monies that you have. And then we come down that column and we begin with the general revenues. And in the general revenues, you have your property taxes, your sales taxes, franchise taxes, and other taxes. Then you have some miscellaneous revenues. And then you have uh, bond premium proceeds. And you have administrative transfers from the other funds. And you have, but that's it on that one. We don't have any transfers out this time. And when you look at this one, you have an unusual item, which is the bond premium proceeds. And I believe that's 419,000. That's, that's the profit on the bonds. In other words, the bonds that you sold, or that you sold this year, the ones that uh, and you bought, you got more money than what you owe on them. You know, that's the reason why it's got a premium. And then you have uh, the administrative transfers, 619000 from the business accounts. And the utility fund uh, had a uh, 1468 uh, profit at, the, at, the, at this point. And then we reduced it by 442000 and you end up with a profit of a million twenty five for the year. And then on the utility fund, you had 38 million in the capital balance last year. Now you got 39, and 419,000 is your increase in activities for the for the governmental funds. You had 21 million in net positions, so you go up to 21,926. But if you look at the at the bottom on page uh, three, this is, this is net position beginning of the year was restated. And we did that because we had to correct some items from the prior years. And basically, we, that increased your fund balance by about nine million, more or less. And if you want to look at it, we can look at it on page, uh, it's on page. Page 47. 47? Yeah, 47. At the very bottom of page 47, we have the prior period adjustment for node M. Over there, we indicate node E for some reason. Well, at the very top on 47, on the prior period adjustment, we, on the net position, we begin with the net position at the end of 15, of 13 million in the government-wide and 7 million in the, or the governmental, I mean, I'm sorry, on the governmental side of the, of the priority period adjustment, you have the governmental funds of 7 million. And then we have the change in net position of 1,260,000 is the loss from last year on the government-wide and 2,202,000 on your governmental funds. Then we begin with the adjustments. We increased the receivable by 358. Of course, that went on both types of, of funds. And we had a reduction on one of your receivables of 36,000. And we had a prior period expense that was, not re that was recorded twice. 
So we bring it back, we add in that 6,000 back to your fund balance, and the capital, set, capital asset adjustment of 294,000, a reevaluation of, of your capital additions, and of course we have long-term liability adjustment, and that's when we're negative of 806,000. And the pen, pension asset adjustment of 125,360, and then the pension liability adjustment of 9,811. Uh, see, last year was the first year we had to record the unfunded portion of your um, of your pension liabilities, and uh, they picked up the wrong amount instead of because actually last year you didn't have an unfunded liability, you had a plus. You were ahead 985,000, but up the total liability and they didn't reduce it by the $10 million of assets that it had. So this is why I went with this adjustment. This is why we're reversing it back this year. And is it from one year to the next or is it just over time and you were just well, kind of getting it in sync now? The uh, unfunded portion of your pension liability is adjusted every year okay. because it depends how your year went. Every year, you're, or I don't think it's every year, but every two years, they may do an actuarial study on your payroll and people that work with you, and they make adjustments based on that. And they, either they increase or decrease the funding that you need to keep you more or less in a level, in a level way. And you're probably one of the few cities that is pretty close to having it funded 100%, because you're only under 99,000 this year. Last year, you were over by 985,000. And probably uh, next year, it may be in the positive mode again, because apparently <clears throat> you might have a, an order that you want your pension as close to being funded 100% as possible. Some cities don't want to fund it very high, so this is why they end up with an unfunded portion. But you have an option to ask the actuarial studies to bring it up to where you want it to be. If you want to have it at almost 100% of a year, they'll try to work up with you on that and get you a, a rate that will keep you at that rate. And, but if you want to pay a little less, but they'll adjust it for that too. Well, that's my understanding. And on page uh, 60, I'm going to show you the schedule that's, that's here. Huh? 49, I'm sorry. Page 49. Oh, it's close by. Page 49. 49 has the uh, schedule of changes in net pension liability and related ratios. It's it's kind of kind of crazy. I have to tell you that because it kind of goes in reverse of how you look at things sometimes. <coughs> at the very we, we they only give us fourteen and fifteen. Next year we'll have uh, sixteen, <coughs> and they're, they're about one year behind. We're, we're picking up the the information as of twelve thirty one fifteen and twelve thirty one thirty one fourteen. Next year we'll ha they'll have. 1231.16. See, on the, so I'll go down both columns. You have the service cost. The, the, the top portion is the liability of the pension. You have the service cost of 607 and 614 for each year, and the interest. Then you have a difference between expected and actual experience on the, on the fund. And then you have change of assumptions. In 2015, we have a change of assumption of 391,000. And then benefit payments, including refunds and employees of 449. So net change in the pension liability was 449,014, but it's 1,202,000 this year. So now our pension liability last year was 1,200,000. And this year is ten million four hundred and forty-eight. This is our. This is what we owe on, on our, pension liability. Should everybody decide to retire and we quit being in the city, we would pay it off, you know. And then on the on the asset portion of it, 
We began with the contributions that came in from the employer. This, uh, on 14, it was 86. This year, you all, in 15, you contributed 143. Then the employee contributions, the investment income on the, on the uh, pension investments, and then the benefits that were paid out as pensions to your retired employees. Administrative expenses, another, and so the net change or the increase in the assets is 627, and 14 is 116,000. I just have a question. We from 2014 to 2015 under net investment income, uh, 2014 reflects 549, and 2015 15,000. Um, that has to do with what? The which one? Under B, fiduciary net. position, net investment income. Yes. F 549. Five hundred and forty-nine thousand, and then twenty fifteen is fifteen thousand. That's the invest. This is what I'm looking at because it's it's last year in fourteen it did very well, and this year it only did fifteen. And this is I'm assuming this this is the earnings on the from the the, the, the on the pension investments that they have. You know, is it very, the company or very poor performance? Yeah. Is it where we're investing that's doing this? Well, we're, we're not investing it. The, the ones that's doing the investment is the TML or whatever. Yeah, TML people are the ones that run this program. We don't, we just contribute to it. I understand. Those it. are the numbers that you're saying, we're reflecting as what's happening. See, so then, see, the increase last year was 600, and this year is very low. So the beginning position was one, 9 million six. This year was 10 million. And we end up with ten million uh, at the end, and ten million three forty nine, and the last year was million two thirty two. But when you take the ten million three forty nine through the compared to the ten million four hundred and forty eight that you have in liabilities, you end up with ninety nine thousand in unfunded portion, and that's just uh, last year you had nine hundred and eighty five thousand positive. See, that's, that's the difference. And this came about last year. And this is probably due, uh, as you see in the news, some of the cities that are going broke, basically it's the pension plans that's driving them because they don't have enough funds to, to fund it. Well, that covers the government-wide section. The next section that we have is the governmental funds on pages five and six. And basically we provided on this one, on page five and six at the very top of the assets, we have the general fund, we have the debt service fund and the non-major governmental funds and a total for 16 and compared to 15. And of course, if you look at the total assets, we're about two million up from last year. And again, most of the, uh, the changes are in the cash balances at the very top. Down below that, we have liabilities. Then we have deferred inflows of resources of, of 1,379,000 and 16, and 1,400,000 and 15. And basically, that's your uh, property taxes that we have there with deferred, which we don't do that in the government wide. Down below, we have the fund balances or capital accounts. And you have, again, we start with reserves. But here we got different types of reserve. We have for inventories, we have for prepaid items. So it changes a little bit. We still have the debt service, the capital projects, most of those, but we don't any reference to fixed assets, because we don't have fixed assets on this financial statements. Now the unassigned or unrestricted portion of the fund balance in the general fund is one million eight, and of course we don't have any unrestricted portions in your debt service because it's all restricted, and your non-major funds, it's the same thing. Every fund is restricted for its own purpose, so we don't, the only one that has an unrestricted portion would be the general, the general fund of one million eight. On pages uh, eight and nine, pages eight and nine is the revenues and expenditures. 
on the general fund and the debt service fund, non major funds. And at the very top, we begin with the total revenues. Uh, we look at the at 13 million for this year and 12 million for last year. At the very top, you have your property taxes and your sales tax. Both of those show increases. And one of the things that I commend you on is your collection effort on your taxes. It's almost 100%. You know, very, very few have that. It, it's on page, uh, on your notes, we have the little uh, summary of your tax assessment along with your collections. What page is that, sir? Are you making reference to? Let me, let me get it to us. It's on. Huh? Page, page 34. Page 34 at the very top. We have the summary on your property taxes. <laughs> Everybody there? Yes, sir. <clears throat> on page 34, we begin with what is the receivable balance at the end of this year. Uh, we show what it was, what was delinquent in 15 and 1 million 428. And then we show the uh, tax levy for 15 minus the collections, and we have 1,438,000. So we went up 10,000 in our receivable. But you see, we assessed 6,363,000 and collected 6,354,000. So well, that's very good. Very, very good. You can't, you can't complain against that. On, uh, down below on pages 8 and 9, we have the, the, your other financing sources. See, well, let me just back up a little bit. On, on excess deficiency of revenue over expenditures in the general fund, we have three million, we're negative 3,793 at this point. On the debt service, we're ahead 138,000. One million, we're 1,609 on the non-major funds and total is we're, we're under by five million two. Then down below that we have the other sources of revenues. And we have the bond issues that came in at three million eight and, and the uh, bond premium proceeds and three million nine in bond proceeds and the non major funds. So that turns us turns everybody positive. Now we end up with uh, ninety seven thousand dollars ahead in the general fund, 138 before and the other fund, but we're ahead 2,640. And if you look at the expenditures at the top, what, what through, through every fund negative was the, uh, the principal that was paid on the notes and also the capital outlay that was created this year. And since this is governmental accounting, is a little different from the front page. Here we expense everything that gets paid out. We call revenues everything that comes in as money. Yeah. So next year, once the projects have been done, these capital outlays become an increase on capital assets because they'll, be, they'll move over to this side. Yes, next year you will be uh, having more capital outlay than this year for all some of the money that you have in, in store because you won't have the offsetting revenues for it. So you'll be going negative on it next year on the governmental section. On, on page uh, 11, <clears throat> page 11 is basically the governmental funds that we just looked at. And here we show the comparison to budget basically. So at the very top, see, on the budget, we have two budgets. We have your original budget of 13648 Then you adjusted the budget up to $14 million. So we, your actual was $13 million, so we actually had $1 million in excess. I mean, $1 million under the budget in revenues. And that, that one occurred mainly with your intergovernmental revenues, because and that's something normally we can't control all the forfeitures. 
because also the grant money that will come in and the forfeitures the same way. It's money that, that may or may not come in due to depending on how well our PD does around town. And on the bottom section, because we have the bond issue again, and we have the same increase in fund balance at two million eight. And on the next, on page 12, on page 12 we have the, uh, the property funds or the individual, you have, here we have the utility funds again, but we have them broken up into three groups. Because we have a utility fund with the water and sewer, we have a solid waste fund, which is your garbage, and then you have your debt service, which is the one that uh, pays off the debt that you have. And then we have the, uh, that's the total for enterprise funds. And we again compared to, to the previous year of 15. And we're pretty, we're pretty close to what we had last year as far as, as cash and investments. And then we have down below uh, the liability sections. And again, we have 17 million in liabilities last year. We have 16 million this year. It's a small decrease from last year. Your fund balance or your net position, which is is the same thing that we had up on the front page. So it's the only area that, that we, we have different here than the front is the on page 13. 13 gives you a better breakdown of of your utilities as to what on the source of the revenues and the expenditures that you have. You know, we have again with comparisons to 15, you have your water sales, you have sewer charges, uh, you have ref the uh, refuse fees, which is the garbage of two million seven, and other operating revenues, penalties. In other words, we define some of the revenues better. You have penalties, you have tap fees, uh, connection and reconnect fees, miscellaneous income, on the expenditures, we have your personnel cost, which makes up the majority of your cost on the utility system, and other services and charges or repairs and maintenance. We have supplies, uh, the contractual services with the general fund, where you pay them to, to do your, your billing and collections and the accounting. And then we have another operation service for 650000 What is that? on the sanitation. Um, <laughs> so let me just, um, what is, in, in looking at your, op or the revenues and expenses, is particularly being the water, um, the propriety funds, their final fund balance I can't distinguish which one your would be that. Oh, okay. Well, at the very bottom, you have the fund balance of being at thirty-two million four hundred and fifty-six thousand. That's total. The figure that you have above it is what it was last year. The change in position is the one hundred and thirty-nine, which is the the profit for the water and sewer operations. Then you have your sanitation. The profit was two hundred and forty-six thousand, and you had a, a balance of four million seven, so they brought it up to four million ninety. Then we have the non-major or the or the debt service, and that one has a net position of one million four eighty-eight. So that would be the fund balance in those accounts. Is that what we're saying? I mean, a change of 639,000, because we transferred 939,000 towards the end of the year to that fund. And those are within the uh, requirement of the 25% that we have, correct? Okay. General pages, 14 and 15 is the class flow statement. On 16 and 17, uh, we have a little more detail on the utility funding. We will uh, look at it because this one has a comparison to budget and actual. And we have 
On 16 and 17, we have the utility revenues with the water and sewer, and with the budget and actual, and, and then on page 17, we break up the expenditures by different sections in your operations. At the very top, we begin with the water plant operations, and we compare that to the budget, and it's uh, very doing very well. You, you budgeted a million ninety-one. You spent a million sixteen. Your water distribution system was also <coughs> under budget, and then we have your sewer plant again, also on the budget, and then your <coughs> sewer collection system, and your utility administration was the only one that went over budget from 629 to 650. And then you have your billing and collection, and that gives you the total expenditures of three million five. The sanitation fund, any questions? The sanitation fund on page 18, we have your revenues at the very top compared to budget and the expenditures. Uh, under operating revenues, you have roll-off roll services, brush and other pickup service, recycling fees, and miscellaneous income. On your expenditures, because uh, again, your biggest cost is your personnel services, 897000 and repairs and maintenance of 333 uh, supplies was 358 and then the administrative contracts was 211, and the contractual service was 650. <coughs> Is that for the, where you take the garbage? Okay, so I thought, expensive little stuff. <laughs> then the following section is the notes. The notes are just, uh, this uh, provide more description on the revenues and expenses that you have in in your funds. On page 49, we covered page 49 with the pension. Uh, I'm just going to briefly just go over the report itself, unless you want to look at any one area specific. On 51... Uh, can you just direct me to the um, overall fund balance for the general... Ma'am? The overall fund balance, uh, your findings for the overall fund balance for the general fund. Of the general fund yes, or, the, or the, the city? Gen the general fund. The general fund? Yes, sir. The general fund by itself had a fund balance of eight. What page? Page five. So 1.8? 1.8. Okay. And you had uh, almost $2 million in cash with that. And there's no other restrictions here. And of course, the okay. only thing here is your, and of course, that's already been taken out, your property taxes. Uh, we already have a deferred amount for those, so that's covered. Very good. So that's sitting very solid. Yes. On pages 51, this is just a summary of non-major capital projects and non-major special revenue funds. On page 52, it's the same thing, but now we have the revenues <coughs> for the non-major funds. On, pa on page 53, what we've done here on page 53, we separated your capital projects funds. Uh, you have four of them. You have a certificates of obligations from 2007, and also from 14, from 15, and you have the, the library fund capital projects, and you have the total for 16, and then the total for 15. This is all cash val balance and investments, and on pages, uh, on page 54, we have the revenues and expenditures, and the only uh, major expenditure here was on the certificates of obligations for 15 of 
78 that was sent over to the county for that street project that you have in conjunction with the county and I think City of Alamo. And of course here we have the note, the, the bond proceeds in it. And Let me just, if I may ask you a question. Yes, ma'am. Um, under total assets and the balances for the different certificates of obligations, um, those amounts that we're collecting are uh, owing on something, are they being uh, held for payment at this point, or are they just the funds that are available? For like the 2007 and the 2014. Okay, that one. Let me check, go back. 2007, 2000, on the liabilities? No, sir, on the, a the assets. You have cash available and then investments for a total assets of yes. 324000 This is money that's, as so far as I know, it's money that was left over on the okay. bond issues. Okay. I don't know if you have all There's obligated. no restrictions on that that you that we would have. Okay. Uh, I'm assuming that those bond issues are already fully spent. This is money that just, just would earn on interest. From the, from the invest, interest yeah. from the investment, yes. Then we have on page uh, 55, 56, uh, your non-major governmental funds, these are all your special revenue. As, as you can see on page 55, 56, you got a bunch of those. <coughs> uh, you have your revolving loan funds, the economic development fund, uh, the federal, fixed, uh, federal asset forfeiture fund, and state asset forfeiture fund, miscellaneous grants, crime victims, Liaison fund, record, record fees, park development. Uh, you have a park sports fee, municipal court security fund, municipal court tech fund, and hotel motel tax fund, along <coughs> with the development escrow fund. So there's a lot of them. The only one that's um, the one that's really working all the time is your economic development fund, and that one has cash in it and has a receivable on the sales tax. It has payables of 34,000 and do two other funds of 19. And on page uh, 57, 58, on the economic development fund, we have the sales tax that came in this year and miscellaneous revenues. And it spent 431 economic development and 209 on principal and 137 on the interest on, on some bonds so, or notes. So we have fund balance of 193. And that's probably the one, the, the miscellaneous grant fund also has some revenues and has some expenditures. And also your hotel motel fund has some revenues of 26,000. Other revenues are 32,000 and spent 91,000 in economic development. So that covers all of your all of your funds, basically. Uh, the other one, we already covered it, I think. No, we haven't. On page, I'm sorry. Page uh, 60, well, I'm gonna go to 60, 60 we already looked at, it. 61. 61 is your general fund by itself with budget and actual, uh, but we have a little more detail on your taxes. You have other taxes, licenses and permits, intergovernmental revenues, which is your grants, uh, fines and fees, and this is quite lengthy. You have a lot, of, a lot of items that you have under fines and fees, and then you have interest income and other uh, miscellaneous revenues and reimbursements. And on page uh, 65, 64, 64, I'm sorry, 63, 64, 65, 66, and seven is all the departments that you have in the general fund, beginning with general government. Uh, you have city commission, city manager, city secretary, municipal court, finance, planning and zoning, 
and purchasing and the building maintenance account. That accounts for all your gov general government functions. You spent one million seven on that, and then you have your public safety, which is your police department at three million three three million two sixty seven, and your fire department at one million three. Then you go to emergency management, and then we have public works on page sixty five. And you have, of course, your storm, water division, your central garage. Then you have culture and recreation, and under that you have your parks, your library, swimming pool, and then you have non-development expenditures, which are just general expenditures, uh, human resources, information technology, and then down below is the capital outlay you had in the general fund. And it's by, by departments. And on 67, we have your debt service payments. Now we get to the compliance section. On pages 68, 69, we have a schedule of all your federal and state grants. I'm sorry, 68 is the schedule. And here we just listed all the grants that they were awarded to you, the, the pro program award and what was spent in, in this year, in this fiscal year. And you only spent 279,000 of the 722,000 been awarded to you. On 68, we just have a reconciliation of where those items are in your financial statements. Then we move into the less Part, which is the report on compliance internal control. And we have a report on page 72, 73, very similar to our audit report, except we don't provide a conclusion on it. We just define what we looked at in this, in the federal grants and state grants. I, I want to ask a question on the um, grants and, and state assistance. You made a comment about the percentage I know that some of this um, will also be used for the forfeiture monies. If they haven't been spent, it's because we are going to be spending them over a certain amount of time uh, awarded at that time. Okay. Okay. So whatever scheduling, you're not aware of what scheduling we are having that we're yeah, that we're that we're not meeting meeting any of these uh, deadlines to exp to make sure we spend them. Who would? Uh, she's not here. Okay, we can ask for that. Yes. Okay, sir, go ahead. Okay, the opinion was we don't have any. Uh, there's nothing negative in the opinion as far as the, the report on it. Then we have a. The schedule of findings and responses. And of course they asked us in reference to the audit whether we find any deficiencies, significant deficiencies, and we have one. And that's the only one that's significant. We have everything else on with a no answer. And of course you didn't you didn't qualify for the single audit because of, you need to have seven hundred and fifty thousand in expenditures. On pages seventy five in 76, uh, we have the, uh, the financial statement findings. And you want me to go over those? The what now? On page 75, we have the, the uh, findings yes. on the fiscal audit. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. The very first one we have is, we label it as reference number 1601. And most of this I'm going to have to read because it's kind of hard to paraphrase. There you go. Okay. Well, our church is worse than that. It <laughs> sounds like somebody's throwing bombs. <laughs> On uh, unrecorded transaction, uh, we have the criteria is the generally accepted accounting principles. They take that all transactions be properly reconciled and recognized in the accounting system. 
And the condition we found is at the beginning of the audit, uh, the, the county department brought to our attention that one major transaction was not recorded during the fiscal year. And uh, the, the cost, the city did not properly record the transaction. Uh, of course, this caused the accounting system to understate budget revenues and expenditures on two sections. And our recommendation is, first we have to state that we understand this transaction is not a common reoccurrence for small communities due to its complexity and also to the recent accounting changes in the recording of these transactions. We're also aware the City Commission was aware the bond issue had, been, had occurred and the outstanding bonds had been defeased or paid off and the construction costs had been paid with some of the bond proceeds. So they approved those transactions so it's not like this transaction was in the dark anywhere. And I recognize the, we strongly recommend to the city to consult with the communities, or other communities, or other CPAs, other CPA form, firms working on governmental audits in the area, and obtain the necessary guidance to record the transaction when it when it occurs. Because at that time, I don't know if you had an auditor or an, a, a, on on board that was working. Well, it normally, cities call so call us throughout the year and ask us for guidance on some of the transactions that they have problems with. On the next one is the bank reconciliation. And in this one we have the bank reconciled items should be properly allocated and recorded. Because the only problem we had here was the bank was reconciled, but one of the transactions was not allocated to the different funds. And the cause, the city was waiting for information from another department. The bank rec reconciliation was correct. However, the individual <coughs> fund general ledgers were not. The reconciling item was a payroll item. And this is a type of entry that's recurring in nature. Uh, but at the time, the city was also dealing with a new software that they were installing. So there was a couple of complications coming into play. Uh, we recommend that accounting department have a closer communication with all departments and make it the priority to complete the transactions on a timely basis. Uh, we have new procedures. You, this is a corrective action from the city. Uh, we have new, proce new procedures in place that require the accounting manager to review and monitor all bank reconciliations along with finance director. In addition, during the fiscal year, we updated to a new accounting software and we're having difficulty in reconciling these items. But we receive, but we received proper training for this problem and have uh, mitigated the situation. On the previous one, I'm sorry, I didn't go over the corrective action that, that the city had. Uh, cities that we recognize our limitation in this area, governmental accounting, and also that it would not have been a difficult thing to obtain you know, necessary resources by calling people. We feel this will not be a problem in the future. We will obtain the proper training, consult with other cities. So, but this is really a very unusual transaction, very, because- It was not a repeated finding in the, as you looked at it. Ma'am? Th these were not repeated findings from the samples no. you were looking, so- no, we don't have any repeat- That's good, findings. so you're just identifying they, one- See, last year you had one on the budgets, mm -hmm. but I noticed this year, the budget was adjusted throughout the year, so the only thing that was throwing it off within a year was that transaction with the bond. Otherwise, you wouldn't have had any. Okay. Or if, they, if you had any, it would have been very minor. Very good. On page 76, we have the control over financial report, and this is the one that's significant. And this is something that the uh, Gatsby people and don't, don't allow us too much leeway as to how, how we handle it. See, a few years back, the, the Auditing Standards Board issued some guidance to auditors related to an entity's internal control over financial reporting. And uh, SAS 112 emphasizes that auditor cannot be part of the city's <coughs> entity's system of internal control. 
Many small organizations rely on the auditor to generate the annual financial statements, including the footnotes. And the condition was that the city and county staff did not prepare the financial statements. Uh, the auditor, working with closely with the accounting department, prepared the financial statements for the entity. And this is very common throughout the, our area with the small cities. Very few cities have all the resources to, to complete this task. The cost, the city accounting personnel and those charged with governance in the course of their assigned duties lack the resources and the training to prepare the financial statements and related footnotes in accordance with generally accepted accounting principles. Of course, the downside is that material misstatements and financial statements could go undetected. And our recommendation in our judgment, our judgment due to the lack of resources and training management, uh, available to management to correct this material weakness in financial reporting, we recommend management mitigate this weakness by providing staff with, general, with training opportunities adequate to prepare the financial statements in accordance with general accepted accounting principles and provide the necessary literature or reference materials. These actions will provide staff with a heightened awareness of all transactions being reported. Management could also consider engaging on a temporary basis additional personnel to assist with, this com with the completion of this audit. And the corrective action is, is that we understand the engaging, that engaging additional personnel would be possible solution. We prefer to obtain the necessary training and consult, without, and consult with other communities or CPA firms in, in ref, uh, to reinforce our knowledge and complete our own report. We will begin by budgeting the necessary funds to attend se seminars and reference materials to address this. Let me uh, ask you the, on the recommendation corrective action, is that boilerplate language that y'all are using? Ma'am? Is that border, border plate language? Yeah. Border plate means, for example, contracts for leasing. Everybody puts this language in there to make reference to it. It's a common language that is used. That's what you're using, right? Yeah, it's border plate. So, so the wording you're putting is wording that's recommended to put whether it is the best wording or not the best wording. Right, because I beg to differ with what's stated there. Well, so I'm the thinking the only reason you're using it is a particular section says you have to state it that way. Would that be a true statement? Well, the wording used to be worse. I'm sorry? The, the, the wording, wording was used worse? to be really nasty. So well, we've we been need to working continue around. working on changing that wording through the Yes, we've done a lot of, well, in the last few years, they, they relaxed a little bit on that one because the first years that it came out, it was just nasty. And uh, was like we explained to to the board was, uh, we, we, how can we judge whether somebody has the necessary capabilities Absolutely. or not? We, 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 you, don't, you couldn't do that. We and we the work that, that you were doing was we, just numbers. Yeah. So you cannot judge the, yeah. so the capacities. We've been uh, reducing the, the edge on that. Uh, uh, finance directors resign <laughs> because of this crazy wording that they had on it. You know, Terrible wording. Because they just felt uh, like we had literally burned them you know, on, mm -hmm. the, on the presentation of the audit. And it really was un really unfair. How often do you use this wording in your audits? How often do you use these wordings in your audits that you've done? We use them quite often. Yeah. There's only couple of cities, with one city, two cities right now that we, we've worked with that that have uh, either they have staff to do the report or they hire an, a person to come in and help them assist in writing the report. And uh, some we, we work with them because they've started to do it. And we kind of look at it this way. If, if there's a reasonable effort to write most of the report, uh, we won't put it in there because I think everybody has a, should have a chance to do what they can with it. It is it's not an easy thing to do, especially when you have the transactions that, that this audit had, especially with that bond issue and now with that uh, 
pension disclosure. It was not an easy thing so to do. It was not your through. regular occurrence that you're that detected those are this. It was crazy just items, yeah. those unusual ones. So, so it requires really it really requires quite a lot. So it, it takes it, time. It's fair to say this is an exception to what we've seen yes. in the past and the audits that you've been aware of in the city. Okay. Well that pretty much concludes our our work. I'm gonna say that we worked very closely with your accounting staff and they worked very well with us. We have uh, they were very prompt in providing us with the information as we went through the process of the audit. You know, to very the good. point that we, we didn't really have to bother Mr. Garza too much. <laughs> and we have our audit for the CDBG funding on time, uh, Mr. Cervantes, so we have to produce that. It's usually around the 5th of April that we have to provide <coughs> for our funding and to make sure that we meet that requirement. Are there any questions for Mr. Garcia? <coughs> Mr. Garcia, do you have anything else you want to add? Or, okay. All right, sir, we well, appreciate it. Thank you for the uh, uh, report. And, um, and it was an unqualified opinion, right? Yes. Okay. Thank you very much. Oh, I'm sorry, I got one more item. Okay. Oh. Better be good. Oh. There's always something here. This that we have is a, uh, a, a letter of which is a communication with those charged with governance. <clears throat> and this letter is it was being combined, and it used to be a very simple letter. Now they combine it with a journal information in it too. And basically, it continues to reiterate again that we've audited the financial statements and then the significant audit findings, qualitative aspects of the accounting practices of the city, and also the fact that you have estimates that we have to deal with. and. It covers a few items, you know, and we have difficulties encountered during performing the audit. Of course, we encountered no significant difficulties that we didn't, we couldn't handle with your staff and our staff, and corrected and uncorrected misstatements. Uh, we have provided the schedules of all the adjusting answers prepared uh, for the general fund. It was basically all the funds that you have, the revolving loan fund, uh, your forfeiture fund, miscellaneous <coughs> funds, hotel, motel, occupancy tax fund. And we have attached them to this letter. In other words, you can remove them. I guess it would be the best thing to do if this letter becomes uh, part of the uh, public record. It, I think it would be best to take those sections out. And then disagreement with management. Uh, we're pleased to report that no such disagreement arose during the course of the audit. We have a lot of discussions, which is, which is normal, and I think we always welcome a, a discussion because it, it makes us more uh, intent in what we're doing. And management representation, we will be getting a letter, a management representation letter at the end of the report and consultation with other independent accountants. We didn't know if any of them are the audit final. We don't have any. And basically all the entries that we suggested, uh, management reviewed them and approved them and they're all in this, front, in this report. And that should be it for this section. Very good. All right, any questions on anything that uh, was discussed or handed to us? There's no questions. Huh? Thank you, Mr. Garcia. Thank You're you very welcome. much. <coughs> Moving on on the agenda. Mayor, Mayor I'm sorry. We yes. need to take action on it. Okay. Is there a motion for approval as Don't presented? Move. Is there a second? Second. All in favor, state aye. 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 Any opposed? Sign. Motion carries. <coughs> Are under uh, D, this is a presentation on renaming of Mayfield Park. Mr. Willingham. This
Yes, good evening, Mayor, uh, Commission. With, uh, with us here today, I have our Parks Board Chairman to present on a topic that has come up at a, at a couple of the last meetings. And uh, Dr. Alvarez is also here to make a brief presentation to the board. Come forward, please. Um, my name is Mark Allen. I am the chairman of the Parks and Rec Advisory Board. With me, I have co-chair um, Dr. Stephanie Alvarez, and I have one of our members, uh, Mr. Martinez, with us as well. Um, Mayor, one of the issues that has come up time and time again um, since last year is um, our Mayfield Park and um, why it um, is named after um, Tom Mayfield. Um, with um, not making any, any excuses, last year we had quite a bit on our plate um, dealing with um, our fund balance and uh, uh, issues that happened with um, previous members of the board. So we, we, quite frankly, we had our hands full last year. Um, this year has come up at a number of our uh, meetings over and over again. I know that I personally have received this year, and, and um, I would guesstimate at least two and a half to three dozen phone calls on this issue. Um, I know that several of my board members have as well. Um, with that being said, we searched and researched over and over again um, some of the discrepancies, some of the stories that were told to us. Um, issues why the community was having issues with the with that specific park being named um, after Tom Mayfield. Um, I personally researched quite a bit, and um, as luck would have it, I have um, an expert to my right, um, which is uh, Dr. Uh, Stephanie Alvarez, who happens to be an expert in Mexican-American studies at the University of Texas, um, Rio Grande Valley. And um, she presented uh, before us um, quite a bit of evidence um, to which led the board to vote unanimously in the removal of um, the name Mayfield from our park. Obviously, this has to go um, before uh, you folks and you folks obviously make the, the ultimate decision. But as far as the recommendation from the Parks and Rec Board, um, that is the official recommendation. Now, uh, Dr. Alvarez uh, does have a presentation of, that uh, she put together um, to uh, go into a little bit more detail uh, for you all. Um, but uh, before I turn over the mic to her, I just want to add one more thing. Depending on um, what happens after the, the presentation, um, there is... Um, two more, or possibly, possibly, I'm sorry, three more items that are still tied to this line item depending on um, how the commission chooses to, to go forth about that. Um, so um, for right now, I there These calls are from active parents? You, you bet. Mean their kids play you know, parks and rec? Yes, sir. You know, baseball and so forth? Yes, commissioner, not just baseball, but uh, all sports in, in, in general. Okay. Dr. Sure. I, I do think it's important to, to mention the, the things that are tied to it, and that is that it is, um, it is that we are asking for the removal of the name, and then it is to open up to the public recommendations for a new name. Uh, so we are not actually asking to rename it at the time, but we're asking for input from the public on what name to choose for the park um, and the fields. There's currently also another baseball field that does not have a name, so. How, how do we choose the list of that we're, you know, the options that we're gonna give to the, the people? That they would go to the board and then the board would discuss them. We want to have a, a online open forum so that people can put in a name and a reason why and then those names could be presented to the Parks and Recreation Board. We, by the bylaws, have to vote twice. And right? So has the board voted twice on this? This is, we have voted at least two or three times okay. on the removal of the name, okay. but we're not recommending a name at this time, and we just want to present the rationale. Me, if I may ask before yes. you get into it, um, so uh, by bylaws, is there also a criteria? And I don't remember, I know we discussed a name, uh, I don't know why we discussed it a few, last year or a couple, or year and a half ago, 
Um, it's relating to someone who also has passed away, correct? Anybody yeah, so uh, can you, oh, this, I, I have the PowerPoint here. So this is, this is also related okay. to why we're renaming okay, it. Go ahead. I'm oh, sorry. Okay, so um, this is part of the reason why we are looking at renaming it. It states in naming of parks and recreation areas, the Parks and Recreation Advisory Board will be sensitive to making recommendations which fairly present the various ethnic and cultural groups in the city of San Juan. And so when I discuss now the issue of Mayfield as being the name of the park, I think that this truly violates um, being sensitive to the ethnic and Latino. So I want to talk a little bit about recent events that have led to the removal of names from buildings and statues that are insensitive to communities. For example, at UT Austin last year, they removed the statue of the Confederate President Jefferson Davis. And this was recently in light of issues around the nation regarding different ethnic groups. Students at the university found that this uh, statue was very insensitive because it represented the Confederacy and that this was really violated what they felt was sensitive to the African American community as well as the Mexican American community because it represented the president of the Confederacy. Now we should remember this historically, but what people felt is this belonged in a museum. This didn't belong memorialized time in history in which African Americans and Mexican Americans were second class citizens and slaves and lynched and killed. So I want to tell a story. This is a picture of a San Juan baseball team. <clears throat> sponsored by the San Juan Janitor Supply. And on the right-hand side over here, you can see Coach 1968 defeated Tom Mayfield as the constable. He became the first Latino constable in San Juan. Shortly after that, in 1970, San Juan would come to have the first majority Mexican-American city commission in all of Hidalgo County, led by La Raza Unida Party. City of San Juan has been the leader of civil rights in Hidalgo County and all of South Texas. I got a call from Mario Reina on the bottom, second to the left when my class was out doing, working on the mural. And I, he said, uh, are you Dr. Stephanie Alvarez? And I wanted to say, that depends on who's calling. <laughs> and he said, are you going to change the name of that park? I said, well, I, I can't change the name of anything. That is not up to me. That's up to the city of San Juan. That's because a lot of people were wanting to change the name and asking me questions. And I said, you need to go to your city commission and ask about that. Do you think what prompted this, because it's been named that for years? I will. Was a mural? I think so. Hmm. I think they saw that we were resurfacing it. We were including the history of the city. We were interviewing people. Especially, we were interviewing people related to sports history, like the famous Bears football team, <laughs> like folks involved in the Raza Unida party. And Mario Reina said, I hope you do. I played on that field as a little kid. And he said, and I grew up terrified of that man. I grew up terrified of that man and I heard stories of that man. He terrorized my family. He said, I used to ride my bike home on Business 83. And I would ride 
past that constable station. It still says it there. Right there, constable parking only. And I would ride past, I would get to the San Juan Hotel, he said, and I would close my eyes and I would stop. And then I would close my eyes and I would ride as fast as I can. Because I was petrified. Because my parents told me how they used to hang Mexicans in front of that hotel. And the law was Tom Mayfield. And he let it happen. So I hope you change that part because that man doesn't deserve that recognition. So he was a Texas Ranger, Los Rinches as we all know it. And in the Rio Grande Valley, as Sonia Saldivar Holes tells, tells us, it was historically dangerous to not be American, live the history of Texas Ranger terrorism because it was state-sanctioned terrorism. They killed thousands of Mexicans in the late 19th and early 20th century. History was silenced among community and families. One of our students who was from San Juan asked her grandmother who raised her, what do you know about Tom Mayfield? He said, no me, she said, no me hables ese señor. Y yo no te voy a decir nada. Porque yo no me quiero acordar de él. There was one very brave person, J.T. Canales, in 1917, who started an investigation, thankfully, that slowed down the killings. And they decreased the number of rangers on the border. But those rangers only became part of law enforcement, locally and regionally, the same way Mayfield did here. In 1915 through 1916, he was a special ranger. And in 1918, he was in charge of all of the rangers stationed in the valley. As quoted in one of the research, Mayfield known, was known to instill fears in the eyes of many of the Mexicans and Mexicans who resided in town. Mayfield definitely killed an unknown number of Mexicans. Whenever they made contact with a bandit gang, they wiped it out. They did much and talked little. Now, 1915 is a particularly <coughs> important year because it was the height of all of the killings in the Rio Grande Valley. Over 300 Mexicans and Mexican Americans were killed. 14 men, as reported by Mayfield in an interview, were killed in Alamo City Park. It's the second largest massacre of Mexicans in history. To this day, the bodies are still buried there. My students have found the plot and know exactly where that is. If anyone can help us, we want to put a marker there. And we also want to put a marker in front of the San Juan Hotel to remember all of those Mexican and Mexican-Americans that were hung there. Because our community knows what happened. From 1901 to 1963, he worked in law enforcement in various capacities, although not continuous. He enforced segregation. He had public hangings and lynchings of sanctioned, that were sanctioned extra, extra, outside of the law. And I, I include this picture, which is very difficult to look at, because this is what would happen. There weren't just hangings. The public came to view this. This is what would happen here in San Juan. People came and watched. There were postcards made of this that Anglos would send to relatives up north. Now the question is, what are we going to do? We know that for 1910 through 1920, thousands of Mexicans and Mexican Americans were killed by the state, by state sanctioned lynchings and the rangers and vigilantes. For many years later, segregation and vigilante justice were tolerated and sanctioned by the state. That's the state and the law were Mayfield. This happened 
up until 1968 when Bravo became constable, and 1970 when the three members of the commission were made up by Raza Unida Party. Are you going to celebrate this history of terrorism? Or are we going to heal from this history and celebrate the community's resilience? We may not think that these actions that happened so long ago have a place today, but they do. They affect the way the, the border is still policed today. They affect the way that the larger United States view residents of the border, Mexicanos and Latinos. And we have to know this history as painful as it is because we have to celebrate our community's resilience and demonstrate that, that this community, San Juan, was able to rise above that and is strong. And this is why people call Mr. Alanis. This is why people came, come by that park all the time while we were working on it. And people were just desperately trying to make these stories available. And we're collecting these stories to make sure that our young people know not just the trauma, but the way that we can heal from it and the way people rose up against it to make this city better. So this is, this is why we are coming to you, because people came to us. Thank you. Mayor, Mayor Pro Tem, Commissioners, as Dr. Alvarez stated initially, one of the, um, or the option that this board um, would like to proceed with, um, and uh, we voted unanimously on this, and um, should you all choose to re remove the name Mayfield from the park, we would like to, uh, with your permission, have the input of our community in na the naming of these parks. Yes, it is ultimately up to the, this advisory board to make the official recommendation and uh, present it uh, uh, before you all. Um, and we have, um, in our bylaws, we have a set of, um, of a certain order we have to go by. It has to be presented a few times before our board and approved. But we really want um, the input of our community because we feel that we owe it to them. Um, with that being said, uh, what we came up with unanimously was to put this on our website allow people to nominate um, whoever they felt was uh, deserving of the honor to, to rename that park in that person's name. Now, there are certain criteria which we will post on the website, um, and it's, this is not a, um, an election, if you will, to see who gets more votes. This is so people can nominate uh, um, who they feel is deserving. At that point, um, this board feels that we can take those names we can sort through them and see who we feel um, as a board is the most deserving and then turn around and uh, with the input of the community and of course the decision of this board, bring that before you all and then have you all make the, the um, official uh, uh, naming of that park, whether it be our recommendation or whether you send it back to us to, to do some more homework. What, what kind of criteria are we looking at? Um, Mayor Pro Tem, uh, first and foremost, the person has to be deceased. It has to be somebody who has already passed. And um, we've already learned um, from history that that's the best way to proceed. There's nothing that can come up when somebody's passed. When somebody's passed, we already know what their history is. We know what they've done, what they've already accomplished. Um, aside from that, we feel it should be somebody who is a prominent member of the community, somebody who stands out, somebody who has done something specific for the community. I personally feel that it should be somebody who has done something for our Parks and Rec, for our kids. Um, and um, again, all these, this, this criteria that we have in our bylaws will definitely be posted, or sh should you all approve it, I'm sorry, would be posted um, on, on the website, on our website, the City of San Juan's website. Must this uh, individual be like a lifetime uh, resident of San Juan or, you know, you know what I'm saying? Yes. Because I, I mean, I don't want you guys to run in that for instance, you know, let's just say they, they choose somebody that's only lived in the city of San Juan for 20 years versus someone who's been here all their lives. 
Yeah. You, you understand what I'm saying? Uh, absolutely, absolutely. Yes. Mayor Pro Tem. Yeah. Um, the, the bylaws do say that, uh, do not say that it has to be somebody who's been a lifelong resident of San Juan. Um, for example, if I lived, let's say, in Alamo or Far, as an example, and um, I came and I lived my remaining 20 years here, and I was deceased, and it was named after me, hypothetically speaking, yes, I should be, um, in my, in our, our opinion, I should be eligible to be, um, in in theory, of course, uh, a candidate to have it named after me. So, so the bylaws do say you have to be deceased. Yes, yes, Commissioner. So I would say that you know, if you're gonna, we're gonna put somebody from San Juan, we would. Make sure that those bylaws say you know get approved and and run before we start even putting out there that we're going to name rename it. The, the bylaws ha have been uh, recently, Commissioner, um, <coughs> reviewed and that that has been approved already, Commissioner. Has it come to the to the commissions to approve your bylaws? Mm -hmm. The bylaws already the bylaw the the bylaws already exist. So in other words, it says that the bylaws say that it has to be from somebody from San Juan. The bylaws do not say that they have to be somebody from San Juan so because it could, could be like, the, one of the examples they give is John F. Kennedy, right, for example. The, but that would be to our discretion and if that's something that you would want, that's certainly something we would honor. But I would also say it doesn't have to be somebody, it could be a, like, I'm just hypothetically saying Unity Park or something, if that's something someone put up or, I, you know, I mean, it doesn't say it has to be named after someone either. It could be named after some ideal. But it could say example. also, preferably, right. from Barry from San Juan or, you know. Yeah, you know, that, that would a, be an yeah. amendment yes. that we could add to the bylaws afterwards. But if this is something you're saying you would want, I think that this is something we would definitely want to do for, for the commission if this is something. I don't think any of us are opposed to that. <laughs> I think because, you know, we can think of really outstanding members of our community uh, who Absolutely. have passed who are not necessarily r related to baseball or to, th or to the sports. Absolutely. But if it's a sports unit, I would think we would want someone who was. If, it's, if there were law enforcement, maybe somebody at the police department. Maybe they were oh. in a library at the library. So I think it has to correspond with that, and if that's not in that criteria, people could name anybody, um, right? Uh, so maybe, um, f first of all, as far as the change of the name, uh, that's not new to me. And I, I truly believe that uh, in our community, uh, being sensitive to what rep who represents and who we're representing as uh, uh, leaders and outstanding leaders and names that we name uh, should be reflective of that. A community, and I think in the research you've done, and I know I've heard them before, I really had questioned uh, honestly until the students came to me and asked, "Did you know the past history?" And I think in learning that, it definitely resonates in me that um, we want to be able to uh, make sure that we have people that want that represent us in names of uh, buildings, fields to be a reflection of what we would love to see in our community members. And so I have no problem with changing the name of Mayfield. Um, i definitely be in favor of that. Um, and I'm glad that, it, that some of the criteria uh, allows for us to make sure that the people that come before us are people that have already have established themselves and nothing else is gonna come up. Um, so, and as far as, I, I think though, I would like to see those uh, criteria and, and maybe you can put forth um, in the near future, that criteria so that we can review it also. Um, and maybe if there needs to be an amendment of any kind that we would be able to facilitate that as well. Just to be clear, you know, and the, and the public knows exactly uh, what we wanna do. And we may use this as a stepping stone for other facilities that may wanna be named after uh, members of our community. Okay. Are there any other questions? Now, I know it's under presentations. Is this something we take action right now? Huh? Okay, so which would be? I get the criteria and everything presented. Then we also need to look at, I'll check if there's an ordinance, because I think years ago one was made, but I'm not sure if it was passed. <clears throat> once, they, once they get their criteria, I don't know how they're going to, I guess the website, once they have all that stuff, they can bring it back. But Mr. Viola was, um, so what, what you're saying is once we have a recommendation at that point, the name would be removed? The name, y'all would not vote on, on the removal today? 
Is that correct? Well, we have nothing. Uh, well, we're not renaming it. No, we're not renaming, yeah, renaming so it. But we also have a few parks um, that currently don't have names as well. And this was uh, this was the board's intent um, when we uh, we did email the the commission um, had a few meetings uh, with Mr. Arjona on that as well. I think we need to na we need to put it in the action to reflect what needs to be done. And first would be removal. I, what I what I, what we did email said removal of the name. Okay, we didn't ask for what we emailed and in the packet that okay. I emailed asked for the removal of the name, not renaming. Okay, so then we I'm wanted to first ask for the removal and okay. then present for the renaming. Maybe Mr. Willingham, there was some miscommunication, but I know I know you put this item on the agenda, renaming. and it I came out as, as a presentation for renaming. on renaming. So it's not really the action we can take tonight, uh, but I think that. But I think that uh, for us to be able to, to notify the public with the proper wording and what we are actually going to be doing, because it does sound like we're going to be renaming right now, uh, but it, I think we need to uh, place it with a proper... I just want to say that this is the second meeting. I'm really sorry, because this is like, I, I, I'm, you know, I coach two teams, and I canceled practice for both of them today, and we have games tomorrow. It's the second meeting I come to, and so I was very meticulous in my email. I said, rename, I mean, removal of name, and then renaming, field this one, field this one, and field this one with public commentary. I, I very, was very specific in what I requested because of the confusion with the last meeting. And so I'm, I'm just a little bit upset right now I understand with that, that issue. You know what I mean? I wasn't asking for renaming. I, I was asking for the permission to put to public comment the renaming. I wasn't, my request for today was removing of the name and the agenda says renaming, which, is, which was not my request. So I, this is my second and, time and coming I, uh, to the you know, board. I appreciate that Dr. Alvarez, said you, <laughs> you had stated it. Unfortunately, it gets to uh, Mr. Willingham. I don't know if you didn't get that email or not. Well, I actually met with uh, Mr. Arjona, um, and, and I, uh, the email. I have the emails as well that, that were sent back and forth to the commission. Um, and uh, again, the, the, the ask was, was for the removal of the name. Not not renaming it, it as of now. Just yes. presentation the on removing it. It doesn't have presentation, but if, if I, my, my gut feeling is that you all are okay with it. If you all proceed, bring it back with the re removing, renaming suggestions of do what you are looking to do. Well, see, but the renaming process is, is cool. going to take some time, and it's not that, that we're rushing this for uh, any reason whatsoever, but um, this is the second meeting where... Um, where, where it hasn't, things have, for whatever reason, um, were at our, at our last meeting, were not allowed to be presented. And then this meeting, again, it seems like um, almost as if the board is, 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 the advisory board is being given a back seat. Um, it was, I don't know how much clearer I could make it. I have emails. Just, um, for, let me just, let me just clarify, Mr. Arjona. And I don't think that, that was intent, Ms. Solanis or Dr. Alvarez. The whole intent was that when I spoke to you, uh, there, there were a couple of items, several items, and one of the things that uh, what we wanted to do was renaming it, but then the confusion was, are we going to remove it before the rename of the, or when we bring it before? Because I, I did talk to you that yes. uh, one of the things was that you could do the renaming at, at, at your level in a couple of meetings, and then you can bring it before the commission. Absolutely. And what we said, uh, can we name it as renaming of uh, the field, and then you can elaborate on the others. You were okay with that. But the conversation was tonight's agenda item, action item, when, when you talked about condensing them all, um, was to re the removal of the name tonight, then going back and having the community give their input, which is going to take some time. I mean, something that's going to happen right. in two weeks or a month or whatever. For all we know, this could take six months. It could take a year. Sure. We, we, we don't know. We, we want to make sure that we give the community plenty of time so they can turn around and give us who they, uh, options who they feel are deserving of, of, of this honor. But you, but you want the name off right now. Yes. Yeah. Well, this, I mean, this. Yeah, and then, commission. And then we, this is yeah. this is this is a long time in coming for this board. This is an action item that we have been working with, um, even uh, prior to to Mr. Mr. Willingham, and uh, for the last two meetings, for whatever reason, um, it's it's not coming forward before the commission well, properly. I, I mean, you know, I think that I, I don't know what the opinion of the rest are. I, I think that it's inevitable that it may will happen. Yes, ma'am. I think that. 
for the purposes of uh, procedure to make sure that nothing comes back and says, well, you all went about it the wrong way. And whether it was misunderstanding, miscommunication, it got on the agenda as just as a presentation for renaming. But for us to be able to take the action to give the community full notice of what exactly we're gonna do, I think that we need to put it as a presentation for removal. And then you've already established that you're gonna start working on criteria. Um, you know, whether it happens or doesn't happen, you, you've, you've already talked about it as a board, yes, and that's what you're gonna present. But I think that, I'm, I'm telling this commission, I think that we need to do it properly by, for, for the purposes of notice to the community. Well, and that we, would could, be, we, could, we could just go ahead and table, table this item so in the next in the next agenda for us. Yeah, that way it's and automatically put on there. And you can go ahead and place it as a discussion with, uh, with possible a action on this item. And you all could go ahead and working on the bylaws, make sure if there's any uh, amendments to do it, go ahead and do those amendments. And then we can. With community, get the names. If we already have names and all that type of stuff, when we come back. No, we, we you know, It's gonna take months. No, yeah, just. Uh, and, and it's okay with the public. No. I think I love. We don't want to rush things. Public yeah. having so we input, but well, for purposes mm -hmm. of tabling, so that we to to give you the understanding is we're not trying to throw this thing out. If we table, it means it needs to come back at the next one. But uh, with a suggestion and the amendment that it be done uh, with the wording um, of removal. Okay. Can't you can't you amend that? Mr. Villalobos, right now? You, put uh, name, that you can't amend it removes, because it doesn't even make but notice. We don't have names right now of, of suggestions. I understand, but I have the documentation that was sent to this commission and to Mr. Arjona no, stating it, that we wanted the removal of the name. Yeah, Mark, Mark we, understand, we understand that, Mark, but it was not, the, the agenda was not posted. And once, once we post it with, the, with this wording, it's not really legal to do, for us to take that action. Next meeting, it will be posted the right, correct way, and that's why we're tabling it. Yeah, I understand. In my part, no, I'm not going to take. I'm sorry, I'm not going to take comments. I'm not really sure. And I, those are the details. You see, those are the details that we need to get out. So when we get the public, we can actually have the public see comments at the next meeting prepared with a better idea. And so um, I think with the suggestion of tabling it, with the understanding it'll be on the next agenda, and y'all can make a full presentation, uh, or at least a indication to Mr. Cunningham, I always call him Cunningham, Willingham, uh, of what you have done since the last presentation. But uh, I'll entertain a motion to table. Ma'am, could I speak, could I say something real quick? Um, I guess the misunderstanding happened because some of the information doesn't go to me and other people can submit stuff on the agenda. And I'm really sorry I wasn't aware that it was gonna be a removal of the name. That's fine, I mean, everybody has an ability to get on this system it's to, so that the directors can do it. So whatever happened, let it be a lesson that we need to make sure that by the time something gets up, if y'all been emailed and, and noticed that, that it, there's a reference point. Make a motion to table this item. Is there a second? Second. All in favor state aye. 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 Both same sign. Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. Moving on to appointments, a con uh, Cepeda. Good evening, City Council Board. Um, I just wanted to present that the Parks and Recreation Board would like to nominate. Mr. Robert <coughs> Williamson, due to Mr. Thomas Vasquez being absent in meetings since December 21st, 2016 through March 27th, 2017. The information was provided in your packets and as you can see, um, they attended the attendance sheets yes. um, from all the board members that were present and absent and at the end, uh, I went ahead and added the application of the individual that's nominated. Very good. Is there a motion to appoint Robert Williamson? So moved. Is there a second? Second. All in favor state aye. 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 Any opposed same sign? Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. Under discussion of possible action on all following matters, a consider approving the exterior building finishes for the new public safety building. <clears throat> Mr. Cervantes. University Commission, good. Mm -hmm. 
some of the exterior uh, materials for the building. Uh, Mr. Uh, Dematos from the K is here to uh, present the options for the exterior features. Very good, thank you. Good evening, Mayor, Commissioners. As uh, Mr. Cervantes uh, likes us to say, this is the fun part of the project. Um, this is the first. Uh, we're tonight only presenting the exterior finishes of the public safety building. Uh, what I handled to you are two options that we uh, pre-selected last week. We had a, uh, a workshop here at the City Hall. Well, not here, but at the, the City Hall. And um, those are the uh, pre-selection of the colors of the main facade of the, of the, of the building. Um, so this is focusing on exterior finishes only. We're going to have another presentation for the interior finishes. Uh, since this, this is a, 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 a rather quick schedule, uh, things are moving fast, and we need to get these materials a long lead time. and we <clears> can, uh, and then we have some time for as you can see the first option you have a darker um, kind of a, almost like a winds coating uh, detail on the bottom okay, which is the split face CMU and then a combination of the uh, brick veneers, which is one is textured and one is it's smooth, it's a smooth face, which will go on, on, a, on this line that you see running across. They will be recessed on the brick itself. This color, so you know, is very similar, if you're not almost an exact match of the brick we have here outside of the library. And at top, you see the we have a cast stone uh, molding, and that will be your lighter your lighter color. Um, so this would be the first, this first <coughs> row will be the first option. And option number two will be on the, with the yellow. The yellow, the yellow and the, and the brick. So, so the one in the Right, is that we call it, it's a split face CMU veneer. So that building will have a, a, a bl the black on the bottom and two faces, two two colors. Right, and then well, right, the bottom will be the dark, and then the 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 brick, right, the brick veneer as your field field color, and then the very top will be your cast stone uh, trim at the top. This is all around the building, obviously. But I see the I see the base color in the in the middle, but I see the black one in the in the bottom. Is that grass or is that going to be grass? Or is it? Is maybe the print, the print quality. Yeah, that because they, they you know I kind of the with the black you kind of lose the 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 color in the middle, and if it's in your second side, the black gives oh, it no, more no, extensive. That, that black. I'm sorry. I'm referring to this part. Yeah, it's the soil, soil, so right. it's going to have grass there or. Because with the black, you lose that color in the middle at this picture. Yeah, yeah. but you really seeing at this point. Forward, okay. From that so that black will not exist. No, it doesn't exist. Okay. I just think the lighter, if you're doing the lighter at the top um, and the lighter at the bottom, yeah. I think gives it a better view than. <clears throat> well, kind of it matches. It, <laughs> it, so it matches. Yeah. Yeah. It kind of stands out a little bit I, more, I think, I, I think. I think it'll stand out by not making it dark down here, yeah. but making it light and making it light. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, just to kind of give it a consistency, this and yeah. then uh, that speckled one, so that it can <coughs> it can come out. I think would be uh, would go well to bring those two together. So you're voting for option Op two. Option two. Option two. Yeah, the second page here. Yeah, could you, if you were to put some of this white around the. The main entrance would that uh, be too much? Since it's a different different material, we, have, we need to ask the, the PC to see if there will be an additional additional cost. 
Well, it would cost or no. Or going to say yes, but or there might be a savings. Right, because you're using to kind of emphasize it. That would get the center. Mm-hmm. Is there going to be a flagpole? Yes, sir. Three. <coughs> Three? Where exactly, sir? How, how tall, sir? Okay, good, good, good. Okay. Okay. All right, with that being said, is our motion to approve number two? We'll move. Is there second. a second? The GC about the, the middle part. Kind of bringing that up around the, the door. Thank you. Thank you. Be discussion and action on canceling this year's May Fest and focusing on only one event, which would be the Noche de Paz for the City of San Juan. Uh, Commissioner Ramirez, Commissioner Maldonado, and Mayor Pro Tem Garza. Yes, Mayor. I had, I had requested this <clears throat> item. Um, I know I went by City Hall, spoke to some staff regarding the event that should be coming up. Um, I was told that there was no funding, lower lack of funding, and of course the time frame, which is we're about a month away from the event itself, which we haven't advertised. And so I don't know where we stand with the sponsorships. Uh, do we have funding? What, how, what is the funding that we have available? And if, and if there's no funding, I would like for us to consider canceling this uh, May Fest and either focus just on one Noche de Paz or rescheduling it, moving it back maybe a month. I know when we had the reindeer or we were supposed to have the reindeer run, I spoke with Mr. Willingham at the time and he says because of the lack of, of, of advertisement on the event itself, we had about three weeks. He says, I'd rather not have it I would feel this, we've lost money in the past uh, with, with, our, with our events, and so I would hate to lose another 40, 50,000. Uh, Mr. Arjona. Yeah, you know, uh, last night we had, the, there was an EDC meeting, and uh, the EDC agreed to participate with the uh, $15,000 sponsor, sponsorship. So the total amount of the, uh, the, the festival is at, uh, at 30,000. So at this point, the uh, EDC partici is participating with 15, so the leftover is 15 is, is with the city. Now, one of the things that uh, the uh, Cowboys uh, production and concerts, well, the gentleman's name, Roy Garcia, one of the things he provided was the carnival, including with a food booth. In the past, the city was paying at least 13,000 to 15,000 uh, just for the carnival alone, and then additional monies for the food booth. Now, this year, he, he contracted it out, or He's in the, he's he's procuring that, that the whole thing is going to be six thousand for the carnival and also for the food booth. If we were to like, uh, like we always done in the past, uh, fulfill all all of those food booths with the vendors, we're looking at about anywhere between sixty five hundred and seventy five hundred revenue coming from that. So if we take away those sixty five to seventy five hundred, we're looking at possibly about maybe uh, sixteen. Well, it's, about, it's about what six thousand less. It's about maybe seven thousand that we the, the, that the city will be required to participate on. Now, on top of that, we will have the uh, the weather insurance, which is another seven thousand. So, in all reality, we're looking at maybe about fifteen thousand that the city will need to participate or contributing to the uh, to the event. Now, the uh, motel hotel fund, we have about possibly eighty four twenty six thousand that we can tap into that. Now. One of the things that the, uh, the yes, we, we, got, we have about maybe four to five weeks, four and a half weeks before the event takes place. Uh, we're ready. I mean, if once, once it's approved, uh, we're, we're going out with the uh, radio stations. And as a matter of fact, today, Mr. Garcia called me saying that the uh, Channel 5 wants a space. And all they want is just to be there. And they're going to advertise uh, on this particular event for free. I mean, no additional monies. And uh, uh, another thing is the... Um, the sponsorships, if we get those sponsors, I mean, he already committed with $5,000 uh, sponsor 
uh, the um, towards the music. So th those are things that, can, that, that we can minimize. If we were to go get some more sponsors, then instead of paying our, our share of 16,000, maybe it'll be less, depending on how much money we actually collect from the different sponsors. So all in all is we're looking at right now at $16,000 more or less as, as to what the city has to participate on, but if we get sponsors, it'll probably be less. It all depends on how fast and... and Um, they're going to contribute fifteen thousand. Yes, sir. And and I was told by one of the members that it's a loan, not not, it's not given directly no, to it's, the. It's the way that it was worked out is, they'll get fifteen thousand dollar contribution to the city. Any any uh, sponsors that they get, well, of course, go back to their kitty. In other words, let's say that uh, they get a sponsor of two thousand. That who gets the sponsor? Uh, let's say the EDC. The EDC. Right. Then those monies go back to the EDC. So the EDC is going to look for sponsors to recoup the 15000 that they're... To recoup as, what, what, as, as much as they can. And we're going to be doing the same thing at the city. If we can get some sponsors, then those monies are going to back, go, go back and offset those, uh, those 16000 that were, that were going to be committed. Mr. Rona, the hotel uh, tax money, what can it be used only for? Or for what other purpose? What other purpose, was, as far as events goes? Or... What is that, that tax? For a hotel, motel. Right. A anything that has to do with uh, promoting the city. Uh, you know, we had the, uh, the Dia de los Muertos. We use some of those monies for that particular purpose because we're promoting the city. So that's, that, that's so what So the purpose is for. for events, not like to pave, not to no, build, nothing not like that. No, not for that. It's, it's actually for promotion. Uh, contract with any bands already? Any bands, uh, I know that uh, we, we cannot get a contract yet until we actually solidify and, and, and approve it, but he's got one, one band already that, uh, that is committed and a couple of others. But we're just waiting on, on the approval of the uh, of you, the, the commission. But how many others? How many bands? How many, yes. There, there's supposed to be five in total. In total. Yes. And it's already set. So if, you're gonna, if we approve it today, you're going to start advertising those five bands. Uh, well, he, he will get the uh, the other four bands to so little, you know co complete because once we once we uh, that is is he gonna get what do we have already set that is my question what the do only we have? the only band that we currently have is La Leyenda again he's been in contact with the other with the other bands the thing is he cannot commit to any because he's not approved yet but once once he's approved then he'll he'll get the uh, the commitment as well on those other bands what's yeah. not approved yet as far as the event. The event itself. Right. But you already have Mr. Roy Garcia already working on this? Yes, sir. Without being approved? Well, it's... How, what, no, I think that's a mis misstatement. It's not we, that it's not approved, right? It's We have budgeted for these events. All of us know that. It was budgeted. It is in the, it is in the budget. What we're here talking about, and what you put it here was, is there enough money? What he's saying is, contract-wise, if, if there was not the money contributed by the EDC, would that have made it a shortfall, perhaps? But we're hearing here right now, if we have 80,000 or so in the uh, hotel motel, the hotel motel is for heads and beds, people that travel to come to be here. That money is strictly for that. <clears throat> and, we do, and if we're having an event, which we've had for the community, two events for some time, it's our ability to be able to promote our city and, and bring the community together. Um, the fact that we've got money that we can do it with, it's, it's, let's put it to work. You promote the city, you, you, you create community amongst uh, our people and people from the outside, and we're not losing anything from it other than building community as we, and promoting our city. So the, the money's there, and I can understand you saying, well, I can't contract unless that approval from uh, the extra 15 that just came in, which is already there, and the hotel motel, it would be a matter of putting that on the, uh, as an amendment to take it from the hotel motel, which is already there. So there's 84,000 in the hotel what's, motel. What's, a, what's the amount? 86,000. 86, okay, Mr. So Garza, so do, you have, do, you, do you have the numbers uh, from last year's event? I have the numbers for the Noche de Paz. No, you, no, no, I'm talking about the May Fest yes. events. My, my question is, was it a successful turnout? You know, did we go under or did we make any profit? We have losses, I mean, on these events. Okay. I mean, we bring 
little revenue, like for entrance tickets, people, vendors, things like that. Mm -hmm. But we all we'll always have losses. So eventually, I mean, those 80,000, we're gonna exhaust them out, right? I mean, because we're spending 50,000, 56,000 every, every event. But in this case, it's only 30, right? Yes, it's only 30,000. In the past, it, it used to be a little bit different than the ADC will take on the energy. However, the expenditures on, on those events were, uh, I don't know, you, you have the figures, 80, 60,000? I don't think so. The events is meant, is meant to make profit. Because that's not the reason to make profit. As long as we break even, or you know, because most of the cities have events and and they're not profitable. They're just breaking breaking even or take a small loss on it. Well, I think I think the breaking. I mean, as long as we break even, one, you don't want to yeah, lose. But, I mean, I, I I you know I don't want to take it away. I, and it's a community builder and so forth. But yes, you have to look at city of Alamo is having theirs. That, you know. They have theirs, oh, and, and they, they no, I know, and so and so, and and sure. then we you know we lost the cook off. Uh, it's here, and it's so again. We haven't promoted it. I know it's in four weeks. What about that money that we do have? If we save it and spend double on our noche de paz, or make something even bigger, but you know that's you know I just don't want to again. If we lose, oh, you know that's fine. But if we lose, I mean a big chunk of money, we're throwing this. It's not a very big turnout. We're not getting a lot of good feedback from it. You know, I'm just thinking maybe we need to look at other options, you know. Then, but if it's going to break even, you know, if we're there, if we have the money. Well, I mean, I think that uh, we, we've done it in the past. It does promote community. Uh, last year, some members of the commission didn't even attend our own, went to Alamo. So I think we got to promote our own and we got to support our own functions. And Alamo's having something, Edinburgh's having something. You'll never have a time when someone's not doing something. Yeah, but, and, and my thing is, me as a, you know, before I was in the commission as a, you know, I live in San Juan, I attended these, uh, you know, with my families, but every year or for the last few years, it's been getting, I guess the response or the turnout is getting less and less and less. So now, if we, how we figure out why or what or what Well, because we're remember, the EDC was pouring in a bunch of money for booze and food. We had that VIP section, and we had a lot of money. Nobody was complaining then. But we're trying to build this so where we can do it actually and afford it through the city so we're not exploiting the EDC money that was being used from other, other funds and not necessarily the sponsorships. So let's correct this. And if it means that we built up these back so that it's, they're self-sufficient and not falsely driven by the way they were before, um, it's two events for this community. Uh, and to promote the community, not just within the city, but throughout the valley. And I think that uh, it's important that we continue doing these and we're gonna run out of, of funds at one point. Uh, the purposes of these funds is to promote the city, so you're not gonna do anything by staying in the bank. You know, and I think that that's what's important. If it's going to promote us, let it promote us. In the bank, it's not gonna do anything. Um, and that we're, we're talking about being frugal, uh, frugal, we are. We're not talking about the numbers that the EDC used to pour in. So I think that the, the cost benefit versus the, the results of what happens when we, when we do these as a community, what we have to look at, you know? And I think that that's, and, and I think in the past, if, if it's been the, the, the form that it was used before, you know, EDC's not doing that kind of thing anymore. They can't, they have to be um, conservative. They better be, especially after what we went through. You know, and another note, uh, one of the things that the, uh the way that this packet was, was put together, he, uh, the gentleman came in with, with a carnival and also with a foot booth, the umbrellas, the benches, for uh, $6,000, whereas before, just the carnival alone, we were paying anywhere between thirteen to 20000 And then on top of that, the uh, foot booth, so that was, a, that was a bigger expense. And this year, the only thing that we need to pay for is 6000 Like I said, we're gonna recoup those monies by, by, by the vendors when they come in and, 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 and sign up and pay the $250 that, that, that they pay. And we've already been getting calls left and right as to is the event taking place, is the event taking place. So we're just waiting on this meeting so that we can move on on that. Uh, it's but, but Mr. Arjona, you gotta understand that this discussion should have been taking place back in January or February. You know, we got four weeks for this event. And, and that's the issue here. You know, uh, we're pressed on time, you know, and, and by really trying to cram everything at one time, I mean, how successful are we going to be? Are we affected by doing that? And I agree. I mean, this event is for the community. 
you know, and uh, it's just something we really need to think about. Because, like I say, this should have been discussed and brought to this commission since January or February. Mr. Willingham, why didn't that happen? You know. Why didn't it happen earlier? We, we've been in discussion with it. Um, it was just a matter of the funds. I mean, we couldn't move forward without uh, final approval of the funds. That, that's, what, that's where we contract the bands. And that's where it all starts with. And so, when did you start working on it? Um, probably early March, late February, early March. Arjona, when did you start working? No, no, we brought it in before, like in January, that we brought it in before the EDC for some help and guidance on that. And that's when the, yeah. uh, my, my understanding from the EDC was that, the, you know, what they, they, they were not going to participate. But as far as this event, we, we started working like right after the Noche de Paz. We started working and right. we started looking and, and contract and, and procuring those, those uh, the, uh, the brokers or the uh, event promoters so they could give us a good pricing. And we're going back and forth with the three people. We wanted to make sure that we get the, uh, the best value for, for what we're going to be paying for. And uh, it, it's not that uh, we, we just started like a couple of weeks ago. This guy has been working on it. And we brought it before you all, uh, I want to say, uh, a couple of meetings ago. Uh, it's just that the... Uh, it, what it is, it's a lack of communication. That's the bottom line. No, I think so. I think so. The problem was is that, you know, all cities do this event, but they don't come back here and, and they're hesitating to make an approval. You know. Once we approve the budget, we need to set okay and give them directions that we're going to have two events, give them the date, and, and it's already approved. Not come back at the last minute and try to approve or disapprove on it. You know that's a, you know every function. They can, I do the Jamaica in the, in the church. I plan one year ahead and I said next year is this date and that's it. You know we don't change the dates unless it, it, something comes up. But, but commissioner, you, know, you said you you said the key word there. You plan how long? One year. Well, one year. Not four see, weeks. But yeah, but this has happened over and over. It happened over. Yeah. LEDC used to have their functions and they knew their, when their dates were going to be. That's why they already they were promoting the Noche de Paz and, the, and uh, Cinco de Mayo. And then they would come for, to the city and ask for some funds to help out and ask for the employer. So they already had their, their dates set. We are here coming, you know, we don't give them directions to get started. And then we need to place a committee. And that committee was going to work with those days that we give them. Now we're here to me, you know, we just get the, get this May Fest going and next physical year, give them directions. Hey, this is the day for next to these two events, you know. But if in fact, Commissioner, the money was budgeted, yes. then we wouldn't be asking the EDC for money and we wouldn't be looking for sponsors. It because was nine it, items would have already, already been there. If you look at their we, budget. We have the money to get it. If, no. if you look at the EDC budget, it's budgeted in their line item. In theirs. They, in theirs. Yes. They're, okay. they're coming over here and, and, and we want to give you, instead of 25, 15, that's their option. Exactly. But they, they do have it in their budget. Exactly. So we're depending on the EDC yeah. to fund it. No, we're not defending. We, because it, they budgeted, then we're ready. It has not. We, we they it. budgeted. We budgeted, and it has not been saying that we're dependent. We have always joined together and did the event together. And it, let me ask Mr. Cuellar, how many grants have we issued out to small businesses if we have this money available? How many grants have we uh, dis uh, distributed to small businesses here in San Juan if this money is available for parties? Uh, we have uh, been working with Lexus, and we're working with one or two others that are affected by the same money we're doing for infrastructure, and we have several that are pending, but since the organization has only... How has, many have we has, issued out? Has it only been restarted since late uh, November? We don't have any that have done actually already. We just have some in the process right now. Thank you, sir. So the motion, uh, Mayor, I'm going to go ahead and make, make, stick to with, the, with the agenda item, and, and uh, my motion is to cancel the coming May 5th. All right, is there a second? So move. All in favor state aye. Aye. Any opposed, same sign? Aye. Aye. All right, let it be known that uh, Commissioner Ramirez, Commissioner Maldonado, and Commissioner Garza have voted against Mayfest. Or lack of communication. Mayfest. Right. That's what you've done. Anti-community. That's all you are. It's called lack of communication. Anti-community. That's what it is. Under item 8A, when, I don't know who was communicating because definitely the people in charge had the information. Consideration of adoption of a resolution to declare an emergency pursuant to Ordinance 1704 for the purpose of hiring personnel. Mr. Salidas is not here. 
No, no, Mayor. Or table um, that? No, no, no. Uh, the, uh, the, the, the reason on, on this particular item, Mayor Commissioners, is that uh, uh, we're bringing this over so that we can give us the, uh, you can give us authorization to, to post it. Uh, only because the uh, there was a uh, gentleman that uh, that quit the position from one day to the other, and prior to that, prior to the uh, when, when we when you all passed the uh, the motion that no more uh, it is only on the resolution basis, Correct. that other gentleman was uh, transferred to another department, which is distribution. So there was now there's two employees that are, you know, short off. However, there's another employee that is going to be out on uh, he's, he's going to have surgery. So he's going to be out. Possibly, we don't know yet. Maybe anywhere between four to six weeks, or maybe a couple of months. We don't know that yet. So we're going to be on a bind with the uh, on this particular day, the utilities. So uh, that, that's the reason we're bringing this back. So how many people does he normally have? Um, I'm not really sure how many people they normally have. Mr. Carlos, you, you know that answer? I don't have an exact count on the employees at the water plant, but I know they're going to be short. They're going to be short-handed, especially over Two the weekends and nights. Operators. For how long? Yes. The other one, but you're talking about the one that's going on a surgery. Right, he's going to go on surgery, Ms. Cordo. Do you know when he's going to be out on surgery? No, I'm sorry. The one that he's not is an operating so, so we're going to be, yeah, we're going to be short three positions in that department. But you're asking permission to, not to hire, but to, to, post. to post. Yes. The hiring will happen after the 60 days anyway. That is correct, Mayor. Okay. And if you need, we need to bring it before. We'll bring it back before with a resolution in, in hand. Okay. All right. And this is to state the name of the position again. A what? Plant operators. Okay. There is a motion that this, according to the information provided by Mr. Arjona, this creates an emergency. Is there a motion to declare that an emergency? So moved. There a second. second. All in favor state aye. 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 Nepo, same sign. Second. A motion passes. Consider allowing the utility department employee necessary uh, pursuant to the resolution. So same this is one. allowing you to go ahead and, and post. Is there yes. a motion to approve? So moved. Is there a second? Second. All in favor state aye. 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 Uh, motion carries. Under IMC consideration adopting a resolution to the Texas Department of Transportation recommending option two regarding the proposed improvements on I-2, I-69C change for the portion of the project within the city of San Juan city limits. Mr. Cervantes. Yes, uh, the Texas Department of Transportation held an open house on March 30, 2017 to discuss three different options for proposed improvements to the I-2 and I-69C interchange. After reviewing the three different options, staff feels that option one and option three will be very detrimental to the properties along both sides of the expressway between Veterans Boulevard and Raul Longoria Road in San Juan, since their accessibility from the expressway will be very limited. Option two does not change the existing on and off ramps configurations. Therefore, staff feels that this is the best option for the portion of the project that is located within the, within the San Juan city limits. The purpose of the resolution is to formally make a recommendation to Textat on the city's uh, preferred option. So we would keep all three, the three exits, based on this? The, on option two, the, the ramps the stay the way they are. Okay. Uh, on their option one and two, but just to give you an example, to get to the Lexus dealership, you will have to, if you're coming from the east, you have to exit on, on Raul and Warrior Road. If you miss that exit, you will have to go all around to access the dealership. That's just an example. Sure. Uh, is there a motion for approval? So moved. Is there a second? Second. All in favor state aye. Aye. Any opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Under item D, amendment to the interlocal cooperation agreement between Hidalgo County, Texas, the City of San Juan, and the City of Alamo concerning the improvements of Cesar Chavez Road uh, to Nolana Loop to Business 83. Yes, uh, the original interlocal agreement for this project is uh, September 1st, 2015, for the purpose of widening Cesar Chavez Road to five lanes shoulders from, from uh, Business 83 to Nolana Avenue. The City of San Juan contributed one million uh, towards this project, if you remember. The proposed amendment will extend the project limits to, to the south to Rich Road with no additional contribution of funds from the City of San Juan. Is there a motion for approval? Move. Second. All in favor state aye. Any opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Item E, 
Consider the approval of budget amendment to the sanitation vehicle line item 22-70.7951 in the amount of $862,595.88. Ms. Gonzalez. Mayor, Commissioner, so I'm asking authorization to go ahead and move uh, 862595 into the approved uh, line item for my three vehicles for the garbage trucks that will be reimbursed when the 2000... 2017 fund, uh, the bond issuance comes in. All right, and this is right now your the amendment is from the the fund. Okay. Okay. So the accounting, you're okay with how it's going to yes. transaction? Okay. And this will be delivered when, Ms. Gonzalez? 45 days after the purchase order. They're giving me an emergency. Uh, putting me in front of everyone, and they're going to give me the three vehicles as an emergency. And they're getting billed extra for the emergency? Or? Pardon? Are we getting billed extra for the emergency? No, no, we're not. And for the record, Ms. Gonzalez, did, did we submit the uh, purchase order already? We're submitting the yes. Okay. 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 All right, is there a motion for approval as presented? Is there a second? second? All in favor, state aye. 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 Any opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Thank you. A consent uh, agenda, consider ordinance a second reading for conditional use permit, operate a drive through business on commercial property, 1.8 uh, acre track of land, lot 19, John Clausner at 1911 North Raul Longoria, requested by Calixto Hernandez, be considered ordinance second reading for conditional use permit for the off-premise consumption at the RGV Coolers Retail at 2604 North Raul Longoria, Suite 106. Described as lot one storage uh, depot subdivision as requested by RGV Coolers. Uh, does anything <clears throat> need to be pr uh, moved? If not, is there a motion for approval? So moved. Is there a second? Second. All in stay, favor state aye. 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 Any opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Is there a motion to adjourn? So, so moved. It's been moved and second. All in favor state aye. 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 This meeting is adjourned at 827.